We are live. We are live on the uh, Prevail Over Cancer podcast with uh, the one and only Keith Bishop. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. And you? I'm, I'm doing amazing. So I, I, have, I always get so excited to sit down every couple of weeks with you to just add so much value and add so much of your knowledge to our audience on cancer prevention, prevailing over cancer, and anyone going through treatments or going through uh, such a hard time in their life if they're diagnosed with cancer, any little thing that we could do to benefit and help relieve the stress and also help bring back their health is in such a, mm-hmm. such a value. And I think we're adding that every time we do a podcast because yeah. the feedback I'm getting off these podcasts is incredible. So um excited, yeah. excited to continue this. Today, we're going to dive into something I uh, I need every day, my my coffee, my coffee and, and something I do every afternoon and green tea. And every night I have different forms of tea. Um, we're going to talk about those. I, I drink right. papaya tea. I drink uh, dandelion teas. So we're going to be talking about hot beverages in a way and effects, benefits on cancer prevention. And, and if you do have cancer, the benefits that it could help decrease the odds of that cancer spreading. So let's dive right into coffee and okay. and before we go into it i want everybody to know is how i have my coffee is black i mean that's one thing right. i don't like additives i don't add creams i don't add sugars i don't want anything black coffee is the way to go so if you are drinking coffee that is the route you want to go is black coffee if you do add a sweetener you want to keep it as natural as possible exactly so the you know artificial sweeteners are definitely bad and and Probably increased risk of cancers is kind of a newer area, but we're seeing some definitely some issues with that. The natural sweeteners, you know, uh, uh, stevia, monk fruit, or even a little tiny bit of sugar, a little bit of honey can be okay. But the, when we go into other things, like I did a post about a, a canned coffee uh, just the other day. And and there's, I mean, I was alarmed. When I, okay, well, we're going to look at the label. It was horrible. Yeah. And, and even... You know, some of those uh, ingredients that they add to it to make it kind of creamy, kind of like a creamer, creamer type ingredients. Matter of fact, creamers overall are bad unless yeah. you do more like a, you know, like a, a true cream or, you know, uh, I mean, a little bit of milk or a little bit of a cream or, you know, half and half. So long as that's all that's in it could be OK. Once again, natural, you know, it's yeah. going to be our goal. And a little bit can be okay. But when they start adding the emulsifiers, there's a whole new study about that. Um, it's called mono and diglycerides. And um, the people that do those frequently or consume those foods with that frequently, including creamers, beverages, coffees with those those emulsifiers, that means it makes it thicker and creamy. And and so that we we like that that taste uh, yeah that smooth, uh, that, that smooth that, flavor that in your body yeah. that, that smoothness in the mouth increases the risk of cancers by 25 percent or something like that and and uh, then there's another one and so that's mono and diglycerides so read the labels and another ingredient that it's a natural ingredient but there's some some potential issues it's called carrageenan and it is a natural uh, thickening ingredient. And and really, there's no research saying that it causes the cancer. But once again, the foods that it's associated with increases the risk of uh, breast cancer by 15, 20 percent, something like that. So so once again, black is is the best. A little bit of sweetener can be OK. A tiny bit of a natural cream can be OK. But every time we add something to it, it's probably going to decrease that effectiveness. Where, where's your mindset with when you look at a stevia leaf, for example, there, there's a lot of push towards that being a better alternative, more natural alternative, but it is processed still. There's a yes, lot of is. processing happening to get that leaf to that stage. So we look at, I mean... I'm I'm at fault of this. I thought I was being healthy ten years ago, right. and I was I was pouring those little yellow and pink packs of 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 natural. I thought it was natural sweetener into my coffee, into my into my food, into my cooking, and, and then we find out years later there's there's a, a ton of things coming out now how they are related to cancer. So yeah. 
what do you look when you look at a stevia and people are like i talked to i talked to a lot of individuals and they're like oh i take I, i'm very healthy i only use a stevia i only this i'm like there's still tons of processing yes. we don't know the long-term effect of this this is still fairly new the stevia leaf in the market right. so yes. what is the long-term effect on these things so my mindset is try to get rid of as much of this crap exactly. as possible right and and so to make the stevia that leaf matter of fact i grow stevia in my garden you know you it do? okay do well yeah, it doesn't do well. Um, it, it does okay. And it's, uh, matter of fact, it's really kind of neat because it's a, an extremely sweet leaf. And and you can do it here and you can grow it in Oklahoma. The further south, typically the better. Okay. So in Oklahoma, we can grow that and it's extremely sweet. And if you, you know, w- one put that into a, a beverage and kind of grind it up and put it in there. You know, that's a definite option. But when we dro- buy those packets and I don't think I have any packets. Oh. I do a second <laughs> from one of my podcasts. Okay. There's a green packet. Okay. And so the, uh, they use chemicals to dehydrate and evaporate out those, the active ingredient, the stevia, uh, uh glycosides, those sweetener ingredients, but they're using chemicals to make that. Exactly. The same thing with monk fruit. It's the same thing. Yeah. And so, matter of fact, when I look at the manufacturing process of making both the monk fruit and stevia, they, they both use some definite chemicals I'm not a fan of. And then they they try to wash and evaporate that out, but there still could be some in there. There are so always going to be residue of those chemicals exactly, in there. Always, yes. always. What's your mindset also? And one that I, I see on, you see on a lot of keto foods and all the healthy foods is uh, tapia sweetener or tapia syrup. Right. And what it, well, it, it, that's another one that it's on the, on the verge of like, people are trying to push it to be healthy. But right. when you look at the processing of that, which I kind of looked into detail, that seemed like the worst of all of them, even at this point. It, it Well, it could be. Yeah. And so there, it is processed and concentrated. And once again, these are all newer type things. We don't know the long-term consequences, you know, of them. And so, uh, even another keto friendly, uh, erythritol, it it is sweet. And so that's an alcohol sugar. And that, what that means is that actually that sugar is a, it's large and it takes time to digest it and chop it up and for our body to chop it up and use it. So it has a minimal impact on our blood glucose, but you know, there's some studies showing that higher amounts of that. Matter of fact, they actually use that sugar in monk fruit and stevia packets and powder because because the monk fruit and stevia are actually so sweet, you can't even measure the powder. It, it is because it just takes a tiny bit. You know, maybe a dropper of those would be better because maybe there's not as many concerns about additional ingredients. But the, the erythritol in, at high doses seems to create some, maybe some inflammation inside the blood vessels. And so now, now they're following people that are you know, having higher amounts of erythritol in their blood levels, and they seem to have more problems with vascular disease. Although those studies are also due to uh, those people were also eating probably large, large amounts of fruit. Erythritol is a uh, in fruit, and, and so they're trying to figure that out, but that's still a little blip on the radar, so it's enough to go, whoa, we maybe need to be careful about some of these packets. So, um, uh, and packets and so a liquid of monk fruit or stevia could be better. Uh, if I had to sweet, sweeten something up, like if I wanted to do that, uh, you know, with my matcha, you know, I might actually just put a little bit of a, a local honey in it, a tiny bit. And so, uh, you know, less than like half of a teaspoon of that was enough to kind of take that bitterness off. And and not raise my blood glucose, I can still remain in a ketosis type state by doing a little bit of that. And way we know is by doing a test, uh, like a finger stick, yeah, uh, to measure the the glucose and ketone levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty disciplined, so I I mean, when it comes to the taste, I I, I overpass that with the mindset of the benefit. So I oh, yeah. eliminate, I, I, I could easily eliminate all that. I haven't had, I'm, even when it comes to honey or, or maple, organic maple syrups or anything, I try to eliminate it. I, I don't even have any, I don't have any in my diet. Let's go back to coffee. So yes, when it comes to the benefits of coffee, uh, you preach about this on tons of posts, uh, tons of times I've heard you talk about this and 
when I first was diagnosed with cancer, I read uh, the metabolic uh, approach to cancer or metabolic disease and all, I read all these books and, and there was a lot of talk of the benefits when it comes directly to my issue, colorectal cancer and the benefits of coffee and also directly to breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And last night I was playing around and I was on Google and I, I just, I was just researching and I found there is study after study after study. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how something like coffee could have so many benefits on preventing and and honestly killing cancer cells. So let's talk about that and let's talk about how to have the coffee when it when it comes to the roasting aspect and all. Like where are you going to get the best benefits of that cuz I I think that's a big aspect of it as well. Yes, so yeah, it's kind of interesting. So coffee beans are roasted mm -hmm. and uh, to turn them dark, uh, they start off with a, as a green bean Yeah, and um, they roast it, that turns it dark. But that roasting process actually creates some of the beneficial chemicals. Yeah. So so that is very, uh, I find it very interesting. I mean, that's some chemistry. That That's what I grew up in and, you know, in, in school and in college and is the chemistry aspects. And, and that's how well, drugs are made. I mean, whatever is that, you know, it takes a heat process sometimes to make something. Well, same thing with coffee. So that roasting process actually increases the levels of the beneficial antioxidants and antioxidants repair the body. Now there's a little bit of a blip and, and we'll see also that roasting process does make acrylamides and acrylamides might increase the risk of cancers. You know, it, the, the weak is the, the link is not real, real strong, but, uh, but the overwhelming fact is, is that coffee has so many other benefits and antioxidants, it way overrides any potential concern of, about acrylamides. Yeah. So, the, and, and there's numerous different chemicals, uh, you know, in there. I don't even know how many, but I've seen more than half a dozen just recently in the research journals. Well, they actually test those and, and, and create those chemicals. And, and now they even make those chemicals, you know, you, you know, synthetically and, and put them into foods and, and, uh, beverages and, and, uh, greens drinks and things like that. So trying to help boost the, the activities of those products. There's, when I was looking at studies, I mean, there's one study I was looking at and I actually wrote it down here. It was published in the international journal of, uh, Mul uh, a journal in uh, molecular science or mu molecular uh, science, yeah. science in uh, January of 23. And it's showing like it, it took a thousand individuals and you saw the benefit. It's almost like um, a chemotherapeutic benefit, which just mm -hmm. roasted coffee on these right. individuals and and they did the whole placebo effect and all that and it was like it was so incredible the results they got so when you're looking at that and you're seeing the future of of treatments and all that stuff how do you think coffee plays a role in all that stuff well i, I think it's very important and so you know especially for colon colorectal cancer you know, you, you, that goes in, of course, and well, we absorb the nutrients from the stomach, small intestine, as, and goes through the whole body. It, with that, very well absorbed, the particles are small enough, so they're going to be absorbed. It's kind of like a, a pre-digested food. You don't have to chew it up. You don't have to worry about your enzymes. You don't have to worry about stomach acid levels, uh, but it's readily absorbed into the body, processes through the whole body, um, and then some of it is going to pass through the intestines right into the, uh, into the colon and put it right where some of those tumors are and where that process may be occurring. And it, it is truly amazing because there are hundreds and actually probably thousands of research articles about the benefits of coffee, you know, and their role on stopping cancer growth and preventing blood, preventing excuse me, blood vessel growth to the blood vessels and helping them to die naturally, apoptosis and, uh, and, and things like that. Coffee also can be done as part of an intermittent fasting. So like in the mornings, uh, for, I know myself, I, I, you do your fasting in the morning. Is that right? Yeah. 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 I do my 18 yeah. hours and my first meal is usually around 1230 every day. Yeah. Same with me. And, and so, but I definitely have my mug of coffee in the morning and then I kind of switch gear. So now I'm, I'm going with a, a mug or actually a cup, a large cup of uh, matcha in this case, you know, in the mornings and then 
you know, and then I'll have another, uh, you know, cup a day. Actually, you know, one cup a day probably isn't enough. Yeah. And so it does take, you know, and research shows it, it's more like two, but more like three, three. Yeah. cups. And so a cup is, if we're international people, 250 milliliters. And, uh, and that's a cup, but it takes at least three of those a day to have an impact on cancers. So we have to get enough of it, you know, in the body and get those, those nutrients in the body. And there, you know, I would also want to throw in real quick, you know, I, I definitely believe it needs to be organic when possible and to limit the, the chemicals that are, you know, that the pesticides and, and fertilizers and, and insecticides and all that kind of stuff. We, we don't want to be putting that kind of things into our body. So if at all possible, not required. Matter of fact, all these studies that we're reading are not organic. So I, I don't want people to get frustrated if they don't have access or can't afford it. But, you know, I, and I, I'm blessed I can. And so I try to do that most of the time. But if, I, if I'm at a, a place or a family member's house and they've got coffee, you know, and it's not definitely not going to be organic, that's okay. I'm going to drink it. But I'm, I'm blessed I can and do have access to that, that organic type things. But it takes enough of it. And so at least three cups and then divided somewhat through the day, unless you're sensitive to caffeine. Yeah. And so, that. The, the, so then we have this noon type of a thing that, you know, have to, we have to be careful about that. There's genetics involved. And so myself, uh, I, I knew this before I got my genetic test, but I can drink a cup and two hours later, I'm, I can go to sleep. I'm a fast metabolizer. Uh, but that also means I actually do need to drink more to have the same effect. I was to say the benefits of it, your body's, yeah. 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 And so, so I, I can eliminate, that means my liver processes chemicals pretty good. And, and so I have to, you know, drink more. So somebody that does have a caffeine sensitivity, you know, and they may only be able to drink one or two cups a day. That's okay. You know, if that's all they can do, because their liver may have a problem processing chemicals and even good chemicals. And so they have those good chemicals can have a tendency to kind of build up in the body. So, uh, you know, kind of like to tolerance or caffeine tolerance, I think is a great way to think of that, you know, and definitely, you know, for some people create, it creates sleep problems. And, uh, and so therefore, uh, and along that line, so decaffeinated can be, uh, used, uh, except for we want the Swiss process of decaffeination, which is more of a steam process. And when that process washes out the caffeine, it also washes out some of the benefits and other chemicals, but it still can help. And so when we add the coffee, even if it's decaffeinated, not as strong or not, let's say not as, as strong of a coffee even or a weaker coffee, then you can, you know, maybe try to drink a little bit more, but add that in along with many other health choices and, and we get, you know, a combined effect you know, on that. Where, where's your mindset with instant coffee? Um, well, in there, like, are for example, some... like Nescafe instant coffee, you buy a jug of it or a jar of it. Very popular. Tastes great. I use it all the time. But where's your mindset mm -hmm. with that? And it definitely can be okay. Yeah. And the, but, you know, as a matter of fact, usually what it is, is actually it's brewed coffee. Yeah. And then they use a, a spraying process you know, to evaporate that in the air and it falls down and, and kind of a heat evaporation process and, and they collect those crystals. And so it definitely can be okay. The problem is, is going to be, you know, there's these, uh, things like three in one and, or that have creamers added to them. No. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be a natural one, of course. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so definitely in my fact, I keep, I have some of those instant coffee packets, um, and so, you know, when I'm traveling, but usually it's actually more like when I'm uh, riding horses on the trail or fishing, yeah. camping, yeah. Um, I've got those instant packets. Yeah. And because I, I, I don't have, well, I do have a, a manual grinder, but I don't have room in my saddlebag for it. So, yeah, of course. so I'm going to take enough, you know, for me to have two or three cups of coffee a day and plan that trip out, you know, so I can have that throughout the day. So overall coffee, let's just ring it up here. And, and we're looking at two to three cups a day. Yes. Right. That would be yes. ideal, organic, ideal, ideal, uh, 
incredibly great for anybody that's fasting. Fasting should be uh, applied to anybody that is preventing, prevailing, or or were diagnosed with cancer. There's so many benefits to that, and we will, that'll leave that for another day. So right. there's other beverages that we're going to dive into now, and there's one mm-hmm. that you talk about a lot, one that you're drinking right now is green mm-hmm. tea, and you're drinking yes. the green tea matcha. But let's let's dive into green tea. Let's talk about green tea, the benefits. Green tea is something that I imply um, actually as a supplement, as you're aware of it. Uh-huh. I use the, the extract as a supplement, but I also do drink my green tea, an organic green tea. I try to drink one, sometimes two cups a day. It depends, mm-hmm. but I am careful because there is caffeine in that. And then you add your, your coffee. So the caffeine levels mm-hmm. you want to be careful with. Mm-hmm. So I do drink my one or two glass of cups of green tea a day. Let's talk about the benefits of green tea, how it should be it utilize what forms of it like you said matcha there's different forms of it so green tea let, let's dive into that yeah green tea has several ingredients called catechins it's kind of like an umbrella term but one of those is called egcg for short yeah. and and it does have significant anti-cancer benefits um it's also a uh, it helps decrease absorption of glucose from the intestines and so that's a, you know, that decreases actually glucose available for cancer cells uh, to use, for example. Um, and people actually, you know, can also, it can, there's several studies showing can help lose weight uh, by drinking green tea. And green tea has more of the EGCG versus the fermented, which yeah. means aged black tea. Yes. So black tea, I will drink it, but it's not my, my passion. You know, I, I, I want to try to do as much as possible of the, of the green teas. So, um, but, so it needs to be, um, uh, a, uh, once again, kind of like a, 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 not black tea, but an unsweetened version if all possible. Same thing. We run into the, the same sweeteners and adding, you know, other things to it because it can be a little bit on the bitter side, but also actually that bitterness is some of the active ingredients. Yeah. I was going to say that. And so I'll, with my clients, even they were complaining about something the other day that tasted really bad. And, 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 and I can't remember what, which it was, but I said, well, whenever you're eating and drinking that, just think die cancer cells, die. It tastes yeah. bad. Just think if it tastes bad in your mouth, what the cancer cells are going to be thinking and, and if what well, they don't think, but what they <laughs> feel, you know, they're going, oh, oh, it's horrible. So I, I just celebrate it. And, and then there are, you know, and. And also, you know, there are actually genetics involved in, in how they like uh, coffee or tea. So there's a bitterness aspect that's an, uh, on the tongue and taste sensations. And so genetically, some people prefer bitter beverages yeah. and yeah. food. Yeah. Same thing with hot, you know, peppers and things like that. And so, so don't get too frustrated if you can't do it. Um, you know, you you know, kind of work into it, make it, you know, uh, we do get used to things. So uh, whenever I was exposed to uh, beets as a child, uh, it it was horrible and my parents didn't like it. So as an adult, it's like, ugh, it's horrible, but I'm intentionally eating those beets. Yeah. And, and now it's like, hmm, that's pretty good. I'm the same with fermented uh, foods and pickled foods and stuff like that. I couldn't stand a taste of it as a kid. Now, now it, I love it. Uh, I, I can put it on anything, right? So you you yes. acquire a taste when you start realizing right. the benefits of it, and you start understanding that it's needed. And you and yes. once you start acquiring and tasting on a regular basis, it becomes. Uh, I guess your body becomes adapted to it. Exactly. So matter of fact, I was talking to a friend yesterday, and he was he complained about something. He wasn't feeling as good. I said, "Well," uh, he said, "I had that pizza last night." I said, "So was it the pizza or the beer?" And he said, well, you know, he says, I quit drinking beer and I had one a couple of weeks ago. And he said, that was horrible. And, and because, you know, we develop tastes for whatever food or beverage. So I'm not trying to say beer is something you should be drinking, but, but same thing. So once you start drinking something, you do develop a, uh, a fondness, a likeness for it and, 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 and realizing that it is good for you. So definitely we can adapt to that. So green tea does have all types of of good nutrients in it. There can be some quality issues. And so um, uh, brewed tea bags 
you know, is actually one of my greatest concerns is that those, and I don't think I've got any sitting here. I had one sitting here a little while ago, but a, uh, uh, a tea bag usually is plastic. Yeah. And there's nanoplastics in it. And now, now they have the equipment that they can actually measure those nanoplastics. And so tea bags are, are my last option. If it were an emergency, I've got it in, you know, in my storm shelter. If I have to stay down there for a while, I, I could drink it, but I'm, I'm not drinking it. So I'm going with loose tea leaves to stay away from the plastics. And then there's quality. And, and so like any food, it doesn't make a difference what it is. Any food that's grown is going to absorb nutrients out of the soil. And different regions of the world have different metals and minerals, good things and bad things in the soil. And so, you know, I do prefer going with teas that come from Japan because they tend to, especially if it's organic, so they aren't using the pesticides and trying to be careful. And there's less issues about, you know, arsenic and, and uh, cadmium and things like that in the soil from Japan versus from some other countries. So now that, but that is a premium product also. So I will drink, you know, teas that actually they may not say where it's from, but my preference is to try to go with a Japanese uh, tea if possible. And matter of fact, it's actually, there's different colors. And so uh, Japanese teas are also green tea. It's grown more in the shade. And so they'll use covers, you know, over the, the fields to shade the tea leaves which makes them darker in color. They grow more, have more nutrients and chlorophyll in them. And so they're more of a, a brighter green color versus a brown color. So most of the time when you brew green tea, uh, you know, it, with the tea bag, it's brown. I mean, it is rarely is it kind of a green color. Ideally, it should be more of a green color. Yes. The browner it is, maybe not quite as good, may not have as much EGCG and other nutrients in it. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting to so, look for that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, um, and that's something, you know, I'm just learning too. And so I, I've, I've made tea all, you know, for years on that. And, and then, you know, I got some better tea. You know, oh, well, this is a light color. And matter of fact, even this, this cup right here is turning darker or kind of a more brownish color as time's going on because it's oxidizing and losing nutrients. And so um, kind of like we talked about nuts in a previous podcast about refrigerating them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, tea is, is going to be the same type of a way. So you uh, open tea on, on, the, on the kitchen counter, you know, is going to oxidize and turn bad and lose nutrients with time versus if you can put it into a container that's closed, limit the air and put it in the refrigerator, it's going to stay better and have that more brilliant green color. If you, if you can put it in the fridge, we're going to, I'm going to dive on. I want to say one quick thing and then I want to dive into something quickly about the teas. It's very, my father used to always grind his own coffee beans. And when he would buy his coffee beans, it's funny that he would, it was instant reaction to keep it in the fridge. So his coffee beans were always refrigerated and he would only take them out when he would grind them to make his coffee. Right. So it was funny they were saying that and it's, and he would always say, uh, you're getting a lot more, I remember him always saying, you're getting a lot more benefit in, mm -hmm. in preserving it in the, in the fridge and our friends and a family would come over like, why do you keep your coffee beans in the fridge? And he would do that. For, he did that since I was a kid for years. So it's funny that you said that. And then that was something that we had talked about, about the nuts and, and, right. and I had read so many studies about that. So let's, there's a few things with tea. Uh, I, I, we, I use an infuser. Mm -hmm. Yes. Stainless, stainless steel infuser. So let's, let's talk about that quickly. Stainless steel infuser. You could buy on Amazon. You could buy it in most, most shops, mm -hmm. a couple bucks. Uh, right. Definitely something you need to use. One thing that I do is if I can get loose teas, because sometimes when you're buying loose teas, you don't you're trusting the quality of where you're buying it. That's what it was. So it kind of, kind of, if, if kind of a little iffy when you're doing that. So if I do tea bags, tell me if I'm doing this right or wrong. When I do tea bags now, if I buy organic tea, but tea bags, I'll actually rip open the tea bag, pour the leaves into the infuser. And then I'll, I'll use that as making my tea. Is that okay doing it? I don't know. 
I I won't do that. Interesting. And so and so so now we're tearing that plastic. It's a fabric and plastic bag. Yeah. And so now we're ripping that. How much of that is going to go into your tea and things like that? Which is going to be worse, uh, ripping it? Or oh, I, do, I, I cut it with the scissors. But yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Or it just when in my mindset when you when you're heating it, that is when you're going to see the plastics and everything infuse more. That's definitely the- part of it. Yes, and so so we need more studies, you know, along yeah. that line. So yes, I definitely understand that. Um, uh, and now there are some tea companies now that are starting to put on there that they don't have plastic bags. And so they're using more of a, a, a cloth bag versus the plastic. So if interesting, it's, interesting, you're saying that because yeah. the tea I've been buying is a little bit more of a high grade tea and it's a little more expensive, but they, they are, it is a fabric. Yes, it and is so a they, fabric. Yeah, and, and it can be a fabric and they actually are going to start bragging about that because of the the now learning or newer learning concerns about nano and microplastics. And so they're starting to put on their their boxes, you know, that they are using a, a cloth or it's plastic free bags. Mm-hmm. And that definitely could be an option. Um, now, my and, and I live in the country and we have we do have a health food store, but, you know, and so far. You know, there's not a single brand there that's in a bag that claims that that is a fabric. So, so therefore, I have to go with more like uh, uh, containers of of tea, and sometimes a metal or a bag container, a zip with a ziploc type lock on it. You know, to get loose teas or or matcha teas. You know, on that. So the yeah. So I don't know about the cutting thing. I I, I don't know. And so, um, I was doing it as in my mindset, uh, eliminating the chances of getting that bag into the, into the hot water. So in my head, if I don't have the option of open oh. teas, I would just give it a little cut, pour the leaf teas in and I'm good to go. That was my mindset with it. What I, yes, I mean, I didn't think about that as well, which is you're always learning and adapting, right? Exactly. Yes. And so, and we don't have to be perfect either. Yeah. So these studies about people that consume coffees and teas, they're not the perfect situation. No. So they're, they're just, uh, they're just human studies. Okay. Uh, and so this person's got cancer and, and they sign up for, they, they agree they're going to write down and this is, these are the things I eat and, and, or in a study, these are the things I'm eating. And this is what happens, whether cancer progresses or not. And so, and they're not really going into great detail about organics and nanoplastics and things like that. So we don't have to be perfect, you know, in that. So the same kind of thing, you know, if I'm at a restaurant or traveling and I, you know, that's a, uh, well, that's what's going to be there. That's okay. Most of the time though, I'm going to try to go with the, the loose leaf, you know, and the, um, uh, or matcha. And so on those infusers, so a stainless steel infuser for the loose yeah, leaf yeah. Uh, or there's some glass ones also uh, that I've seen. I, I use a stainless steel one. Yeah, so do I. And and works very well. You just want to be careful and watch because there are quality issues with that. But as time goes on, if there's any type of breakdown on the metal and kind of a rust, you know, kind of things going on, you, you got to toss that. You got to get another one. Um, so, but just kind of just double check that because there, it's always kind of like always wet. Yeah. And so the greater likelihood of some corrosion type thing. So, you you know, we have to toss those. There's some glass ones too, and I haven't used those, but that could be a maybe even a better option. Um, I'm too clumsy. I use stainless steel. It would break. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna. You know, I, I'm, my wife has trusted me with this glass, <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> and that's it. So uh, not not any, any other um, glass type things often on that. But but stainless. Same thing with with coffee now. And so we just go back to brewing coffee. I do prefer a, a stainless steel and glass and or glass French press. Okay. So the stainless steel, uh, press on that is a filter yes. and, and, and then same thing with, um, or a pour over a stainless steel pour over. Yeah. So late afternoon, you know, uh, and I just need one cup. I'm definitely doing a pour over. And, and so once again, a stainless steel, not a plastic no. Pour over type thing and, and even filters. So I'm not a big fan of filters. 
So the coffee filters, they do get rid of the sediment that can happen, like there's even some sediment in this tea, but they can get rid of that sediment, but, uh, but then there's chemicals used to make that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the, the bleach, know? the bleaching, everything like that. And that's not really just paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually is plastics. plastics yeah, too. yeah, yeah, 100%. And that's something we just don't know. That goes into the, uh, the K-cup thing. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't touch those. Yeah, and and but even my and, and so I most of the time, unless I have to make like a big pot of coffee, um, I'm going to be using my my press or my pour over. But yeah. um, so I had the same kind of concern. So if I use that drip coffee maker, you know everything using, about it is you're plastic. Using a plastic, and you're using a filter, exactly, and a filter. And so now that you can get filter uh, stainless or uh, gold uh, or something, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, filters. And I have used those, but still, uh, and and I, I've got that. I pulled it out. We had some company come in a couple of weeks ago for the weekend. And so I pulled it out. We used it. Um, and then I put it back, you know, out of the way. And so I prefer not to do that to reduce the, the plastics. And it's more old-fashioned, you know, my parents, you know, as a, before drip coffee makers came out, I mean, they had the old-fashioned glass percolator they, they put on the stove. And, and so it'd boil the water. You could see it come up and go through the, the, uh, the filtering and things, things like that, or a metal coffee pot, you know, was also popular for years. Yeah. And I think those are definitely healthier than, than many drip type coffee pots. And, no, and there's I, always, I, I agree with that. And so that's just another thought. It's not like you need to, oh no, got to get rid of that instantly. But it's like, hmm, okay, well, I'm going to go get a, you know, a pour over or a French press and kind of make a little change. You, we have every single day opportunities to increase the benefits of mm-hmm. our health. And, and it's usually just choices. And sometimes time doesn't allow that choice to be made. Yes. But mm-hmm. if you were making 75, 80% of the day healthier, better choices, you're living a better life than most people. So it's just constantly looking at all these things and trying to figure out ways to increase the benefits of what we're trying to put into our bodies exactly every little change we make has a hundred percent hundred percent every single thing um and then you know the, the bad des- you know, decisions we make you know has an impact too yeah. but we but we and we can't we don't have to be perfect but we we can make little tiny changes that can have you know it, it's, awesome. it's impossible to be perfect I mean, like you said, like I, I'll take a, a bag and I'll cut it and not thinking of the, the consequences of that when I'm cutting that bag. Like I thought I was making a, a, a super healthy choice by putting it in an infuser. So Sorry. you're <laughs> no, but it's, 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 it's true. You don't, you're, you're trying to do when I look at my life and I looked at my lifestyle since November 24th of 2022, the changes I've made, I'm living, if, if you were to write down everything I do. I mean, people would think I'm like, I'm living to the max. Like I'm, I'm overdoing things. And in my mindset is, and we've talked about this a million times. If somebody's going to give me a 0.0001% chance of my cancer, not reoccurring, I'm going to do it. Whether sure. it tastes crap, whether it is, it doesn't feel right. Whether I'm doing, you're well aware now we're, we'll bring this to another topic for another day. I, I'm doing my, um, I, uh, my, uh, vitamin C IV and mm-hmm. it's, it's, I don't like it. I can't stand needles. I can't stand sitting there with a needle in my arm for two and a half hours, which is mm-hmm. I'm putting up to 75 grams right now to bring my 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 levels up to full for 400. And do I need to do it right now? My 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 uh, my numbers, blood work, everything's back to normal. Everything's fine. I, I'm I'm I should be cancer free right now. I'm doing it as a preventative action. Sure. And mm-hmm. and 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 it's something I can't stand. But that's where you have to have that mindset. And a right. lot of people won't sacrifice that mindset till it's too late, till they get diagnosed, till they have something. Right. And you have, and then you'll sit back and be like, if I only did this, I only did this. We all have the opportunity to make the right choices or at least make a majority of the right choices that are going to not put us in that situation where I wish I did this. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and we can make all, all kinds of little choices. So I had a client I was talking to the, the um, oh, almost a month ago now with prostate cancer, metastasis, not a great situation at all. And, and so I started talking to him about his food type things. I said, well, what'd you have for lunch yesterday? Uh, SpaghettiOs. Okay. And, um, you know, what'd you have for, you know, lunch today? 
uh, ravioli thingy you know, in the can too. And I said, well, you know, I said, you, you, we, we need to be changing that. You need to be going with fresh vegetables and fruit. And if you want some meat, you definitely, you can, but it needs to be more like fresh meat or frozen meat, but more natural type things. And after we got finished with that appointment, as I was getting ready to turn the button off, he goes, well, that was a waste of time. I'll never do that again. So he's not in the right frame of mind and you know, he's not going to survive. You know, because he, he's got way too many things and, and he's not willing to make, you know, uh, those basic changes, but it's more like natural. We, we need to bathe our body and there's some remarkable stories, you know, and you, you know, this too, remarkable stories about people with serious cancer issues that, ha, you know, are just bathing their body internally, you know, with nutrients, you know, and, from, and, and, and they're getting, and they're flipping around stage exactly. four cancers and 10, yes. 15 years later, the healthiest shape of their lives. And it doesn't happen every day, but there's a right. lot more churning around a lot more people you're seeing change their lives, change their outcomes and doing it naturally, not doing it through the whole conventional medical Correct. systems of chemos and radiations and all that stuff like that, which in turn, we could talk for another day. Uh, are there a benefit to them? Are there not a benefit to them? That's another story for another day. Right. But, but there is incredible stories, incredible stories of how incredible the human body is when it's fed the right stuff, when it's given yes. the right opportunity to and, strive. And, and coffees and teas are a great way to do that. And and so, matter of fact, I tell my clients that you know tea definitely can count toward their you know a water intake yeah. every day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, Where, where's your, oh, sorry, I'm gonna, let's talk about that. Let's talk about when people talk about caffeine, you always hear that stigma of, of caffeine is dehydrating you. Is that, I, uh, to me, you're putting a fluid, you're putting a fluid in your body. So where's the mindset with that dehydration aspect of coffee well, and caffeine? If you're, when you first start drinking caffeine, you're going to be more sensitive to the caffeine effect. The caffeine is a diuretic, increases your own output, definitely, but as you drink that with time over months and especially years, your body becomes resistant to that diuretic effect. And so therefore, you know, and coffee is a little bit more acidic. So, you know, I'm, I don't really count it toward the water intake, but definitely teas don't have as much caffeine, 30%, 20 or 30%. Yeah. Of, but it, this is matcha and it's 20 or 30%. It's stronger than loose leaf. Yeah. So it, but it's 20 to 30% caffeine compared to what's in a, the same size, a cup of, of a strong coffee. So teas will count toward that water intake, but we build up tolerance to it. Yeah. And, you know, and I can't say with, with my experience and I'm a, a coffee drinker and I drink it even at night and, you know, within an hour or two, you know, that fluid, whether I have coffee or not, that fluid is going to go pass out. Yeah. You know, and, and not be an issue. There's always going to be an exception. Some people are more sensitive to that caffeine. And so, and they may like if, if they have the noon coffee and they have a hard time going to sleep at night, genetically, their liver has a hard time processing the caffeine. They may be more sensitive to a, a diuretic effect of that also. Yeah. So, but overall, you know, I'm, you know, we build up a tolerance to the caffeine. And so, you know, moderately caffeinated type beverages definitely count toward that water intake. You know, we can only drink so much, but matter of fact, you can also drink too much water and be a, a problem too. Yeah. And so you can dilute minerals down and, and even I've known, well, I, I have one client, she could not get pregnant because she was drinking too much water. She was too acidic. She was actually healthy. She was exercising and she was actually so acidic. Her body was killing the sperm. That's we crazy. all, we did. I know all we did was cut back on her water because she was drinking like two gallons of water a day. Wow. Yeah. Because she was, she was an athlete. I mean, she's a very serious athlete. And, and so she drank almost a half a gallon in our appointment when in one hour, you know, and, and so we cut back on her water and she ended up having five children. <laughs> so we just cut back on her water because she was drinking too much. So water can dilute the minerals down in potassium, for example and magnesium. Now we got heart problems. Yeah. So too much of anything can be bad, but, but definitely beverages, you know, can count towards your water 
or fluid. That's fluid like intake. I would say fluid. I mean, fluid. that's another, this is another misunderstanding with fluid intake is people think if I drink a ton of water, I am hydrated and your body still needs the minerals in the fluid to be hydrated. I mean, sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and I feel dehydrated and I'll put literally a little, di- a little dab of um, sea salt on my tongue. And then I'll drink my water just to keep increase my hydration levels in my body. So, I mean, those are all things too. So don't over understand, or I should not over, you should, everyone should understand that just drinking water is not going to hydrate you. Right. You need the minerals then, in there. And, and we have to be careful about going overboard on, on tea. And yeah. so actually drinking tea, I'm not as, as concerned about, um, but, but if you drink a couple of cups of green tea a day, and you're taking green tea capsules, e.g. CG capsules, yeah. we, need to, we need to monitor the liver enzymes, ALT and AST, just kind of make sure that we're not creating a little bit of a, an issue. So, Interesting. Uh, so uh, e.g. CG and other herbs, you know, what, what are supplements, especially supplements, but those are concentrated forms. So it's like 200 milligrams or 250 milligrams of EGCG in a capsule. You know, this may have 80. Yeah. Yeah. On the high side. Okay. Maybe 125 milligrams in, in a strong cup of matcha. And so, so we're going with a lot more that goes into, into the stomach, stomach blood supply goes through the liver first. We call it first pass effect in the medical world. And if we overwhelm that along with other drugs and supplements, now we're running into problems with potentially liver issues. And I've seen it happen with some clients. And so I would say, okay, we'll do two capsules of green tea a day. Well, you know, they either misunderstand or think, well, if two's good, you know, I can double that up because I've got cancer. I want to kill this. And so they'll double it up. And I've had a couple of people that their liver enzymes went up from taking too much EGCG capsules. Interesting. Interesting. It's a little bit of a caution about that. Um, and, and so, but also doing this before meals decreases the glucose absorption and, you know, also, um, helps out with uh, some energy use by cancer cells. So actually a green tea before meals is going to be my preference. Let's talk about that quickly too. There, I wanted to talk about two other teas yeah. in our times running here. Um, one thing I remember you saying to me is when you, the connection of L-glutamine to cancer and right. in having a green tea, I just, when you said that now, having a green tea before a meal will reduce the mm-hmm. L-glutamine in your intake of the food, which right. will reduce opportunities for cancer growth or tumor growth. Dive into that quickly. Yes, yeah, sure. And so this, once again, this EGCG. Yeah beverages and and supplements uh, taken before meals act, does two functions. One, it decreases the uh, absorption of, of glutamine yep. you know, to a certain extent. It's not uh, not going to totally avoid it, but, but the main process is actually inside the body. It keeps our body from using other proteins and amino acids from those proteins and converting them into L-glutamine. So by doing this before meal, the theory is, is that we're going to decrease that L-glutamine use by the cancer cells for energy. So L-glutamine amino acid used for repair, we have to have it. Our body's going to make it. But those cancer cells are going like real fast. Their metabolism is fast, fast, fast. They're multiplying fast, fast, fast. But if we can interrupt that and take out some nutrients, L-glutamine and glucose sugars, you know, are two of those nutrients. If we can limit that with intermittent fasting, and in certain approaches, now they, they they stumble. Yeah, yeah. And now now they're just what, what, what now it's going to be hard to grow. And so if we can do enough interruptions, the cancer cells struggle. And and, and you're hoping the good cells will, grow. will kill. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So okay, so that was one thing I wanted to talk about. There's two T's I'm going to dive into. One we talked about prior, and I I actually incorporated it into um into uh, I would say daily. I, I have a green. T- I have one. In, I'm not a green tea. I have one of these teas right before I go to bed every night after I do my sauna. Is a uh, roasted dandelion, um, roasted dandelion extract of the leaf, and okay. it doesn't have once once again. It has a really bitter taste. Doesn't taste the great, the greatest. But I have read study after study after study, and this is something that you have not put much research no. into. But I've read study after study, and I want you to do this 
um, when you do have a chance, I mean, you yeah. have a busy life, to research this a bit more is the benefits of dandelion leaf to colorectal cancer. There's so many links and so many studies out there. And for a while, I was actually doing buying organic dandelion leaf and putting it into my shakes. Um, it was just it's so bitter, so hard to eat. So now I just implied an organic um, leaf and, and I'm doing a, a tea every night with it. Mm -hmm. And I do that steadily as part of my, part of my regimen, part of my routine. And like I said, there's so many benefits out there. So I'm going to hold you to talk yes. put a little study about it so we can actually talk yeah. a bit about them in a little bit more, but anybody out there that is dealing with colorectal cancer, please research dandelion tea or actually just dandelion naturally organically. If you could consume it into a food or sauteed or put it into your shakes and stuff like that. There's a lot of benefits. Another one that I do uh, do about two, three times a week. This one is very bitter, very hard to drink. I got to make a little small concentrated about three times mm -hmm. a week and I just chug it down. It's papaya leaf. Okay. And yeah. the reason I started taking that, there's so many linked benefits to the um, increase of your blood platelets. And, and I've always had naturally low platelets. Um, I've always been in the range, but always in the low end. After, mm -hmm. after my surgery uh, last February, um, my playlists were very low for a while. And I started in taking this about three times a week to increase my playlist. And it's something I've, I've just steadily kept because I've always had low playlists. And, and it's something where anybody that's going through any form of cancer or any type of treatment, their playlists could drop. So that's another thing to look at is papaya leaf, incredibly uh, linked to increasing blood platelets and, and, and the benefits of that. So there are two, right. and there's one more that you talked about it. Um, right. is it. What was the one you talked about? Mul mulberry. Mulberry. So what, uh, like, mulberry. to talk about so that. Yeah. And so that's actually, you know, here in, in, uh, in Oklahoma, and actually, well, it's, you, you probably have some up there too, up North, but mulberry trees, berries, mulberry, yeah. mulberries. And so the mulberry itself um, has, whether it be the dark mulberries or white mulberries, mm -hmm have a lot of antioxidants. So the berries are wonderful. Yeah. And and the advantage is as a matter of fact, I've got two black mulberries and one white mulberry tree. And and I it's it's fun because every day I can go out there for literally months and pick mulberries every single day. Interesting. And, and they're so they're so they're not a bush, they're a tree. They're a tree. And okay. and in in this case here they grow up as a tree okay. and they're almost like a weed because the birds eat those and deposit the seeds. And, and they, they just keep growing all over the place. Yeah. They keep growing all over the place. There's almost like a weed here and they're kind of messy. So some people don't like them because uh, you can't pick every single one. You can't reach up all the way to the top and they're dropping on stuff and you're walking on it. And, and we're talking about like a blackberry color. I mean, yeah. it, it, it really it's stain, it'll stain everything. Yeah. It will. But there's also research even on those leaves and even the even the stem. So when you pull a, a mulberry off of the, the tree, there's a little tiny green stem that's on that. That stem itself has anti-cancer benefits. And so they, so matter of fact, so all kinds, of, I'm not surprised about dandelion. I haven't studied that, yeah. uh, but I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised about it because the mulberry leaves um, and stems, matter of fact, a friend of mine is, she's a, uh, uh, oh, she's a certified horticulturist and, and she is big into growing things and medicinal plants. Yeah. And so, and I mentioned something that I had a mulberry tree over by our drive that I was actually trying to get rid of and it keeps coming back, but it's not where I want it. I was out with a hatch, I mean, an ax trying to get rid of that thing. And, <laughs> and in, in my effort, we actually had a Bible lesson about mulberry trees in the Bible. They're talking about it, about how resilient they are. And, and yeah, I can't get rid of this tree. It keeps coming back. But anyway, so, uh, and she said, well, you don't want to kill that because of the medicinal. I said, I know, but I've got those other three over there. I don't need that one. And so, because it's medicinal, all kinds of antioxidants that repair our body. So making teas out of many different things could have some benefits. You know, there, we, we don't want to get that poison ivy. You know, make yeah. a, tea, a tea out of that. So, I mean, so you, it need, we need to be kind of smart about the leaves and what they are, but definitely all kinds of nutrients can be extracted by brewing them in, in teas and making teas out of them. And so I'm not, I'm not surprised about the, the, the dandelion at all, but even mulberry and matter of fact, we're, there's many different kinds of teas out there. 
And and I'm sure that you'll have more comments about people. What about this? What about that? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll, 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 I'm sure we'll have another episode on this and and adding different um, different versions, different different teas, uh, different hot beverages. But coffee. Let's just recap: is coffee yes. two to three cups a day, typically. Right. Mm-hmm. Try to have it organic. Try to eliminate it from a drip. Um, I guess a drip machine, the plastic. Yeah. You're trying to have it as as natural as you possibly can when available uh Mm -hmm. green tea green matcha very very highly recommended tons of benefits towards uh cancer same thing uh we're using an infuser trying to use as organic we're trying to use a uh loose leaves as possible as much as possible and then i just added at the end um you added uh your uh would you would you call it mulberry mulberry Mulberry, you know, it's funny because I, I, I remember you talking about this once and I went into the store and I couldn't find them. Here. No, it, no, it's kind of, well, it's, it's, you know, it's a kind of a sensitive fruit. I don't know. It's not, uh, I mean, just not that popular. I don't know why, but yeah. it, it, you know, actually it keeps, you know, we can pick it and it stays fresh. We can keep it for a, up to a week in the refrigerator. Is, there, is it, is it, a, is it a sweet, is it sweet, is it bitter, is it sweet? Oh huh? yeah. Sweet. Yes. Very sweet. Yeah, and do they yeah. have a, do they have a seed in there or just, an, no. it's No. Interesting. Not that you can nothing. Not like a black raspberry. Yeah, uh, raspberry easy. You know, nothing like that. Um, so it's uh, v- very sweet and and but they're not very big. So they're they're the size of my my end of my little finger. Typically, okay. Okay. there there are some brands that you know and ver- uh, versions that could be more like the size of my thumb. Yeah, but typically not here. At least the ones that I've got here, and the trees can actually get humongous. Interesting, uh, you know, and and so it's kind of a neat tree, you know. Interesting. And, I'm gonna look into it because I last last summer we talked about this. Last summer I planted uh, uh, blueberry, uh, raspberry, and blueberry uh, bushes, and and I didn't think of them my, my first season I was getting anything, and I ended up getting uh, quite a bit of fruit off really them good, the first yeah. season. So this year I'm excited because I um, let's see how much fruit we could get out of it for uh, throughout the summer here. So I'm gonna look into that and see uh, if it's available a tree here because they yeah. seem to grow decently glass containers and so uh so ideally not paper cups yeah stainless going, steel stainless steel glass yeah. ceramic you know are going to be your better options uh paper cups we we have the nano plastic thing we are yeah. learning that uh, matter of fact that is a no no concern yeah major concern about those plastic paper cups paper cups are actually coated with plastics yeah which is essentially every every drive through Exactly. So yeah, that that's a no no. We got to if, if we do that, we got to transfer it into another container as soon as possible. The longer it's in that plastic, the greater the concern. Yeah, yeah. I, I would assume as soon as that hot beverage hits that plastic, it's going to just start. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's, it's just open. starting. It's starting to infuse into the coffee. So I mean, you try to limit it as much as possible. And I'm sure most drive throughs if you have your own stainless steel mug, um, they'll be more than willing to fill it for you. Uh, they could. Yeah, they. You know, sometimes they'll fight back a little bit because of sanitation type things. And so, um, you know, is your cup clean? And, and that, yeah, you know, I don't know. I've, I've seen some pushbacks on it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been amazing. Like always tons of tons of information. Like it's like information overload every time we do a podcast and, and I'm sure there's people that are going to have tons of questions as well. So I'll be passing those to you. Your blog is amazing. Uh, where can people find your blog? I always yes, put in the so, show links. At, yeah, prevailovercancer.com. And so I've got a blog and, and a learning center. We've got all kinds of free downloads about foods and quantities and fasting and and even little exercise type things. So I've got a lot of free information and a blog. It's a great resource, great place to start your journey if you're just diagnosed or even, you know, just trying to prevent or treatment, whatever. It's a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. The more information you get, the more you learn, the more knowledge you have, the better opportunity you have to fight this and right. to come over on the winning side, which, man, if, if people were to take control of their health, a lot more people will be coming on the winning side because it feels like lately since I've been diagnosed and I've really jumped into this whole cancer world and I started realizing how many people cancer affects, you're also realizing how many people are passing away with cancer right. and, and they're just going the medical route and they're not making the changes to the root causes of where the cancer came from 
They're not making the changes like that gentleman you had on the phone call conversation saying this is a waste of time. They don't understand the metabolic effect of, of, of your body and how cancer could be treated through great foods, great beverages, vegetables, fruits, supplements. There's so many things that really could build your immune system to another level that it gives you a chance for your body to fight this and, and prevail over it. So Everything, every time we we come up with one of these episodes and all the information on your blog and on your posts and all the information is it's so critical for anybody that's ever diagnosed and understanding and learning and learning. And I always say this, and I've always said this, the day you day, the day you die is the day you stop learning. So you need to keep mm-hmm. informing and learning and you're constantly learning. Like I'm listening to a podcast all the time i'm in the sun i'm listening to a podcast and i'm just like wow i didn't know that wow you know then you you take every piece of information you get whether it's from our podcast whether it's from Mm -hmm. keith's website and you don't have to imply everything but you can learn you can do your own research on it but it's just taking it and, and and increasing your knowledge that's all we could do so i appreciate you i appreciate everything you're doing and you're helping millions of people and i think you're helping more people than you even realize this. So I appreciate everything you do, Keith. Well, Je- and Jeff, thank you for, for doing this for the podcast, your, your team and you, you know, for, for doing, take the time. People don't realize how much time and effort it takes to, to, to do this, record it, get it out. And um, it, it's a process. And, and, I, and but thank it's you for doing really, that. really worth it. And I mean, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in a way doing this. I started this as a benefit for myself as well, because I feel like I'm constantly learning and, and surrounding myself around positive people that are helping other people. It's just allowing me to kind of duplicate and, and diddle that to other people as well. Right. So mm-hmm. I appreciate this all, buddy. So until next, I guess in a couple of weeks, we'll be at this again. This will yeah. be, this podcast will be released ASAP and I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.